oh, go check my cheesecake. Alexa, stop. Watch that lid because it's got tons of liquid on it. Don't, don't, mm, mm, mm. Did you poke the cheesecake? Michael? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you poked the cheesecake. Don't you think it needs zoomed in a little bit? If you want it zoomed in, go zoom it in. No, it's fine. Just get some, sit closer. <laughs> Maybe not. People what turn on me like, why are they looking at me like that? <laughs> it's week 12. We should have the hang of this. I think so. That means we're three months in. Three months. Happy three, three month three anniversary. Months. Hey, happy three month anniversary. Woo! Did you get me anything? No. I got you a cheesecake <laughs> and I poked it. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to week 12 of As Good As It Gets. I'm Chris. And I'm Mikey. And this is a weekly chat from our kitchen. We want to welcome you guys back after the Thanksgiving holiday. How was y'all's holiday? Leave us a comment down below. Let us know how it was. Was it a good time? Was it horrible? Um, whose football team did you root for? You don't have to relive it if it's horrible. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. What no, did yeah. you cook? What did you have? Did you yeah. use your slow cooker? If not, that's okay. But what what was your favorite thing you had at Thanksgiving? Yeah. We are actually taping this early um, because we will be doing all kinds of family festivities over the <clears> holidays. <throat> so we want to make sure that we don't leave you guys high and dry without the weekly chat. Yeah, we figure y'all are laying on your couch like this going, oh, <laughs> I need something to do while I lay here in my food coma, eating all those leftovers. I'll watch Mike and Chris on as good as it gets. Really? That's what I do. <laughs> I wanted to share something as a brief little update because um, we've been talking about different cookbooks that we like and so we have our slow cooker cookbook uh, buyer's guide that's out but this is something I purchased after that. If you guys remember I absolutely loved Crock-Pot's um, original collection, slow cooker original collection which is in that roundup of, of cookbooks and we'll share that with you again um but I found this one I think at Barnes and oh yeah it's it's written right on here I found this at Barnes and Noble I know that they sell it on Amazon too um anyhow it's I can make that in my slow cooker which I'm always drawn to these kinds of um cookbooks because we love doing things that people never knew you could do mm -hmm. And so we have been cooking, um, we've been using this as kind of a brainstorming um, book to do things. So like our uh, pizza that we keep talking about, I don't know if it's been up on Cooking Chris's Dishes yet or not, but our, um, our bubble up pizza, there's a version of that in here. Ours is quite a bit different, but this is the base that I started with because I find that a lot of times the crock pot branded cookbooks have really good ideas that um that are a great place to start yeah so that's we that one um the cheesecake he keeps talking about um that's if you watched last episode we may have been talking about the cheesecake it's still cooking um i poked it <laughs> and i got in a lot of trouble for it so it's again um there's a cheesecake recipe in here and we've adapted it quite a bit yeah. for uh what we wanted to share with you guys and so we're fingers crossing that it's going to be okay and survives yeah. mikey poking it <laughs> Here, when we do recipes, um, if we do a recipe, direct recipe from somebody, we're going to give them oh, credit totally. for it. Oh, totally. And I still, I will always link to the cookbooks, even yeah. if that's where the original idea started from, even if that's not. But I'm going to, I want to use this for a second because we've gotten a lot of questions here lately on, can I do this? Can I put this in this dish or whatever? This, as well as this, actually, well, not this as much as like cooking Chris's dishes, it's called reference material. You take this and you get ideas. Like for instance, I'm just gonna flip open the page. A boom! It says cornbread and bean casserole. Mm -hmm. hmm, that does look good. I might do it, but I would look at some of the ingredients and go, hmm, I wonder if I could use blank instead of blank. Or if I could add, I don't know, let's say bacon 
to it. And it's funny that it came up to cornbread and bean casserole because the cornbread casserole, and I swear this was not planned. That was cool. Um, I had a question on the cornbread casserole. The, uh, somebody asked if they could use bacon and chives and put in it. Mm -hmm. And my honest answer was, I don't know, because I've never put bacon and chives in it. Right. But, as not uh, there, man. This guy was a man after my own heart because he wanted to add <laughs> bacon to something, and if you add bacon to it, I'm gonna come over. Right. And yes, it's just reference material. If you want to try to put something different than what we put in it, or than what Crockpot, who makes millions and billions of dollars selling Crockpots and recipes, you know, if you want to deviate from it, that's why they call it reference material yeah. and not the Bible. Well, but we also. The reason why we test recipes on before they go up on the site is we want people to know that the recipes that are on the site are are things that we've tested ourselves. Yeah. And most of the time, most of those recipes have been tested several times in our kitchen um, to make sure that we've tweaked it to get it just the way that we like it and the way that we think our readers will like it. Right. And so... Um, asking us about switching out a recipe or switching out an ingredient. I mean, sometimes that's easy. Can I switch, you know, pinto beans for black beans? Yes. Can I leave out the mushrooms most of the time? Yes. Um, but like asking us about things that might really change the recipe, we can, we can always give you our best guess. Yeah. But we're never going to be able to tell you for sure until we try it. Well, like somebody asked me um, one time, well, what if you don't have evaporated milk? What can you do? Right. And, I mean, I was going to type out, and I and I did answer the question, but I was going to type out, and it would have came out like I was being a smart aleck, but it's honestly what I did. Google it. Yeah. You know? You can Google for substitutions when you're in a pinch and that kind of thing, but unless we've tested it, usually we're not going to say, hey, we wholeheartedly recommend, we're always going to be like, give it a try and see what yeah. you can do. So, but that's a, that's a very good point. But if anybody suggests that I add bacon to any dish, I would <laughs> probably try it anyway. He, he's willing to be the guinea pig. <laughs> All righty. Okay, well, we have a reader question from okay. Jennifer, and Octavius needs to pee. <laughs> it sounds like, and we're going to a commercial. Well, that's pretty much Aki. what's going to happen. Oh, it's getting windy out there. Yes. The leaves are a-blowing. Most of the leaves up here in Indiana it's are off really the It's really warm today. But the temperature is supposed to drop. Shh. Like right now on here, it says that it is 72 degrees outside, and they're talking about snow on the day that you watch this. No. Oh, wait, no. No, this is a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we're a little ahead. Yeah. It snowed last week, maybe. <laughs> the temperature's Mikey, dropping. the weatherman. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be a very good <laughs> okay. weatherman. Okay, Jennifer's got a question for you. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jennifer. You know what? You're wearing yes. your glasses. I wore them last episode, too, and you didn't say anything. But you can't see no googly eyes. Mm-hmm. All right, Jennifer has a question for you. She said, what is... The thought of um, make-ahead crockpot meals that you can put in the fridge the night before cooking. So things you can assemble and put in the fridge before. Yay, nay. What do you think? I really should have thought about this question and read this question before you asked me on the spot because I don't know. Um, I'm sure there are some things you can do, like veggie dishes. Um, I think some things, if you put them together the night before the flavors are going to kind of soak together. And mm -hmm. then when you cook it, it'll be more, you know, it's kind of like it will, you know how something tastes better the next day versus how good it tastes the day of? That might actually give you the, the next day flavor. Yeah. I would say most main dishes, you could probably get away with it. Um, except for maybe cut potatoes. Cut potatoes oh, might yeah, turn no. a color, but a way around that is if you use like the little bitty potatoes that you don't have to cut up. The babies. You could throw those all together. Um, most other cut vegetables, I think you're probably going to be able to get away with. What do you think about meats though? Like if you were to take a chicken dish, like a chicken and stuffing dish, mm -hmm. and put it in the fridge the night before and let it sit, is there any danger with that, do you think? Uh, not with the meat, but I would be afraid that your stuffing would disintegrate mm. overnight. Because I would be more concerned about any kind of bread or baked good like our pizza that we keep talking about i wouldn't crack that biscuit 
uh, tube open and put that overnight because I just don't I don't know how that would do overnight. Oh, I don't think it'd do good no. at all because the liquids would soak no. down into the biscuits. But on the flip side, if you do the crustless pizza, like what uh, Lou has a recipe up for the crustless pizza, I think it would do fine because it's just the layers of ground beef um, and tomato and the toppings and or tomato sauce and the toppings and the cheese and something like that is going to do fine overnight. Um, so I would say you're going to have to, it's going to depend on what you choose. Most soups you can go ahead and put together and you're not going to have a problem with, um, I would say most ground beef recipes you're going to be able to go ahead and put together. A lot of chicken recipes you are too and pork. Um, but the breakfast and the dessert recipes, mm, I, I had a disaster one time of putting ahead a time before I could tra before I traveled with a lava cake and it has a step where you pour, pour something in, you're not supposed to mix it and it rode in the car and it jostled the whole way. And by the time it got there and I turned it on, it just turned it into a hot mess. <laughs> yeah, it was that. awful. And I felt so bad because um, it was for one of my girlfriends who really, really wanted lava cake. And I was making it for her. And, or you were helping me that morning to put it together. But I had to cook it on site and it was just a disaster. And so, yeah. So I would say baked goods, probably not. Uh, but most of your main dishes and soups you probably can get away with. Or and this also kind of help another question. Um, if you're using a ground beef recipe, make sure that your your ground beef is already cooked up. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is where you'd want to use that, that make ahead ground beef recipe that we've mm -hmm. showed before. Um, but somebody asked me the other day, you know, can you put your hamburger just directly in your crock pot and cook with it? No, mm -hmm. because all you're going to get is one great big honking slab of meat and not yeah. chunks like you want into your bites. That's where the Make Ahead ground beef comes in real handy because it turns a lot of those ground beef recipes into like a dump and go recipe because you can just grab a bag out of the freezer a lot of times and and crush it up and sprinkle it in and it'll be mm -hmm. fine. It Like we do that with soups all the time. So that, I without knowing specifically what you're talking about, that's kind of our basic answer to putting things but we do that we do that here particularly if we have um if we have a big day where we're taping a lot of stuff I might prep a lot of things the night before and put in the fridge um roasts and those kinds of things almost always can be put can be put together you know and honestly if you don't care for your potatoes to be a little discolored uh you could chop those up too um, but some people get, they don't want their potatoes to brown, brown or, yeah. or, uh, you know, I guess if you freeze them chopped, sometimes they even turn a little black, but they're still okay. But anyhow, so that's, that's that. Um, now we need your magic to go to the menu. You okay. ready? And one, two, three. Hey, baby, what is on the menu this week? Alrighty, well, we are going to show you guys a little bit of some of our, what I would consider lighter dishes that are on the site. It may or may not fit your particular menu, but with all the Thanksgiving feasts and all the holiday dinners that we're going to go on, we just wanted to show you some of our favorite recipes that don't aren't quite so heavy. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and okay, so breakfast, a great warm breakfast in the morning is our um, crock pot creamy oatmeal. Um, it's just something that we like to keep in the fridge and everybody reheats it. You can sprinkle some fruit on top, nuts on top if yeah. you want. Um, it's just a general Honey. great, yes, great recipe. For dessert, um, my friend Sarah at the Magical Slow Cooker has a great cookbook out um, that we actually made her fresh berry syrup from. And so if you're wanting a light kind of dessert, that fresh berry syrup served over an angel food cake is really, really yummy. Um, you could just go, you can either make a homemade angel food cake or you could get one from the store. Yeah. And check her out also on YouTube with the Magical Slow Cooker. Yep. You're not cheating on us, we promise. <laughs> we support her too. We yep. say she's awesome. She's got some great recipes. Yep. Sunday is our usual family day, so no cooking on that day. 
Um, Monday, we've got a Cook and Chris's Dishes coming up that features this. Um, it is our one pot chicken dinner. Um, it's just a great kind of throw everything in the crock pot um, that is very, very yummy. Um, it's got potatoes, carrots, uh, rosemary, chicken. It's just a cooks up real, real nice. Very and, hearty, very yeah. Well, home, it, very home style. Home style, but it it isn't super heavy. It doesn't oh, gosh, have no. like a heavy mm -hmm. sauce or anything like that. So, um, and then on Tuesday, we've got our Fiesta pork chops. Olé. Uh, yes, and we're serving those over brown rice. Um, I actually um, am not a fan of brown rice. I really don't enjoy it. And to, but I always liked the brown rice at P.F. Chang's, if any of you have ate there. And so I did some research, and I found, and we'll put a link to this, I found the rice that tastes like the P.F. Chang's brown rice. And so it is so yummy, and so it's a great way for us to be able to eat brown rice and enjoy it, because I don't like the, like, the minute rice mm -hmm. version or whatever so anyhow over brown rice and we're also going to serve that with our sweet potatoes on wednesday you can have leftovers or we've got lou's version of chicken white chili which is a very yummy um lighter version of chili um and then on thursday we've got our beefed up tacos which have lots of beans and I believe uh, tomatoes inside with the beef. Mm -hmm. We use an extra lean ground beef when we make ours up and it's very, very good. Um, and then we're serving that up with some homemade guac. So got that. And then on Friday, we've got steak and mushroom soup, which is just, it's, it's got yummy cremini mushrooms in it. It's got leeks in it. If you don't want to use leeks, you could use onions instead. Um, it's just a yummy great way to have a soup that isn't too heavy either so that's what we're eating this week saturday we'll be doing more recipe testing to get more recipes yeah. up on the site as well as on cooking chris's dishes yes yes so do we need Very to high good. five it back i think we do because good job baby uh, ready? <laughs> and we are back and it is time for the featured slow cooker of the week and we have for you this week the Hamilton Beach. Right size. What? It's called right size. Right right size. Do you have to do this when you tell people? Sure. It's the okay. right size. Yes. And this is a six quart. It is a two, four, and six quart. Oh, that's right. That's why it's the right size. And one of the things I like about it is... His favorite feature. Well, it's because of transport. When I take stuff into work and... Co-workers, if any of y'all are watching, I'm going to be bringing some stuff in soon. Um, but I want something to hold those lids down because I drive like a maniac and the lids tend to slide. Yes, so, Yes. So what's really cool about this is you can look on the inside of the crock. I'm going to take this out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. It's got markings. There's, there's ridges. There's a ridge. There's a ridge. And then a bump. And then the, yep. the top. And so, however much food you fill up the slow cooker, if you fill it to the first ridge, then it's a two-quart recipe. If you fill it to the second, it's a four-quart. And if you fill it above the second one, then you should use the six-quart setting. Yep. And so, this is a really neat slow cooker to have um, when you like to cook lots of different recipes. Um and it's a great multitasker. Yes, and we have a lot of people who, you know, are just a family of two that are saying, how do I make a meal mm -hmm. in my big slow cooker, mm -hmm. but it's only eaten for two, and I don't want to make this great big honking meal. Mm -hmm. But let's say you're going to have people over at times, and you're going to make a great big honking meal. There mm -hmm. you go. You've got your two-quart setting all the way up to your six-quart yep. setting. We've actually had um, a, a man contact us before who was telling us that he likes to actually double our recipes even though he's home on his own um, because he likes to freeze a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So he oftentimes is asking, okay, what do I do to make this uh, double the recipe? But the front panel um, just lets you set what size slow cooker you're going to mm -hmm. use. And then your hour and then your high and low. And yep, your temperature. You know what? This would almost be the perfect slow cooker. We just had the, the, yeah. it doesn't the cord have thing a, on the back. It doesn't have a cord winder. Yeah. But 
That's my only con for it. We've cooked a bunch of recipes in mm-hmm. this, and it does mm-hmm. a really good job. Oh, our pumpkin pie cooks up really nice in this because we can set it on the two-quart setting, and it pops it up. And it's going to last longer because it's got the ceramic right. versus the, the non-stick. non-stick. Yep. Cool. So it is definitely a keeper around mm-hmm. here. We like it. Um, we had an older version of, I don't think it was called the right size. I'm doing the quotes again. The right size slow cooker. But Hamilton Beach uh, did a multi-bowl version of that. Um, Years ago, we had it where you had the two-quart bowl, the four-quart bowl, and the six-quart bowl. And I just saw last night that I believe Crock-Pot has come out with a multi-bowl version. But honestly, after having the multi-bowl version and then having where it's a single crock, I like this one better because it's less clutter and less to manage. Oh. Um, because you can't cook with more than one bowl at a time anyways. So having it all in one bowl is kind of really, really nice. Yep. I, I really like that. So That's a good slow cooker right there. Good job, Hamilton Beach. So They do a really good job. Yeah. Yep. And okay. they're not sponsoring this show. We're no, saying it because no, we no, like no. their product. Yep. yep. Hamilton Beach, if you ever watch it, if you want to sponsor the show, call me. <laughs> but for now, we're just going to use What do you want them to call you? Hmm? What do you want them to call you? Partner would be fine with me. <laughs> oh, you're silly. Okay. Right, let's go to the featured discussion yes. where we talk about lighter recipes. Yes. Okay, so Thanksgiving is over and everybody's also going to all these holiday parties. And so I think right about now is when folks start thinking, oh my goodness, I need to kind of lighten up what we're eating in other places uh, or on a regular basis because of all these extra meals that we're having, or it's just a concern. We get so many emails of people who are on a specific diet, either from their doctor or they're doing something specific for themselves that they've joined a certain program or they're doing a certain something. And that's great. For everyone who's trying to do something um, for their health, be it from a doctor or on their own. Um, I will say, as a general rule, our site is a comfort food site. So we're not a site that if you're trying to lose weight, that, you know, every recipe right off of the recipe card is going to fit in with whatever lifestyle change you're trying to make. However, that doesn't mean that with the proper tools or the proper knowledge that you can't convert some of those recipes to make them what you want to Mm -hmm. make them. So I I will say that just to begin with, um, the menu that we shared today has some of our lighter recipes, meaning um, that, that they just the the ingredients um, are a little bit lighter compared to some of the other recipes on the site. But that always leads to the conversation of people want us to calculate for them the nutritional information on the recipe. And that's not something that we offer. And there's a reason for that. There's lots of reasons for that. But One of the reasons um, is that we are home cooks, we are not dietitians. So we are not going to tell you this is okay for you to eat if you are on a low sodium diet. I am not a doctor, I'm not gonna tell you that because I think that that's a serious thing that you and your doctor need to discuss and I don't want to ever mislead somebody. Right. And part of the reason I fear misleading folks is because it all depends on what product you use. When we call for a um, an ingredient, I might be using one brand and you might be using another brand. Um, and my brand might have far less sodium in it than the brand that you choose to use or the brand that you love. And so that's where I would encourage you to talk to your doctors, your nutritionists, your dietitians um, to, to understand the tools. One of the tools that we use and that we like to help us know exactly what we eat um, is loseit.com. They have an app that you can put on your phone that can scan the barcodes on your products. 
um, as you're putting them in to your recipes and then it helps you calculate the recipe because the the exact ingredients and brands that you're using are important and the portion sizes that you choose to eat at the end so excuse me we might say that casserole feeds six but depending on the portion um size you might want it to feed four like because people are more hungry so portion size and nutritional information of the exact products you use are things that are gonna be different in every family that eats off of our website. So we don't want to provide you a false sense of this is what's in here versus um, what you actually put in there. It's a lot different than going to McDonald's and seeing how much is in the breakfast burrito. Right. The calories there. They because know what it is. Because every McDonald's is making it the yeah, same. Yeah, they're using the same company. It's using the same bread, you know, and the same meat, the same cheese and everything. Now you're making me hungry for a cheeseburger. Yeah. So I just wanted, I went into our pantry just knowing that we were going to talk about this. I have not, I did not go grocery shopping for this. I just went to our pantry and looked for ingredients that I had different brands of that I could show you what I'm talking about. And so I had no clue what I was gonna pull out, but I just, I went ahead, and even though these are different sizes, the serving sizes are the same. So I want you to look at the, that one. This is enchilada sauce, which we use on a couple different of our recipes. And so a great example for a fourth of a cup, is that the same serving mm -hmm. size for you? The calories in this enchilada sauce are 15 calories. How many for you? 45. Okay. The total fat grams um, in this enchilada sauce is 0.5 grams. How much for you? 3.5. So uh, let's see. What's another one? The sodium in this one is 370. This one's only 280 milligrams. Okay. So we've got more fat and more calories in this and a lot less sodium. Right. And then I have total carbs as three grams on this one. Mine's four. And uh, fiber is one on this one. I have no fiber. Okay, so this is the same ingredient, but made clearly very differently. And so if I use this one and calculated the nutrition information for you, you'd be getting a lot more calories, a lot more fat, um, and, and less fiber and less sodium than what this one has. Now, mind you, that... That difference, you can take times seven because there are seven portions in this can. So that's going to give you seven times the difference as what we just described. So that's one example. But let's go on. Because I went through and I thought, well, chicken broth, that's something, neither one of these are low sodium. Um, and I think these are probably a little bit similar, but we'll see. So I thought chicken broth. Uh, the calories for one cup of chicken broth on this chicken broth are five calories. This one's got 10. Okay. Um, there is no fat in this chicken broth. There's 0.5 grams of fat in this chicken broth. All right. Sodium, I'm at 860 milligrams. We're at 860 here. Okay. Carb, I have one carb. One carb. All right. And then and I, have no, I have no fiber. No, nope, no fiber here. And no it protein. Says one gram of sugar and no pro no protein. No protein. I've got one gram of protein. Okay, here. that's chicken broth. So that's and I know that that's not a huge difference, but it technically is double the calories. Yeah. From two different kinds of chicken broth, um, pasta sauce, which is something that we use a lot. Um, this pasta sauce, the serving size is a half cup. Same here. A ninety calories. Seventy. Okay, I've got two grams of fat. I got 1.5. All righty. Uh, carbs, I have 16 carbs. Carbs, I have 13. I have two grams of fiber. I have two grams of fiber. Um, and I have two grams of protein. I have two grams of protein. Okay, so again, that's the, there's a 20 calorie difference, but this has five servings in it. This has five servings as well. So this, this jar of pasta sauce is 100 calories more than that jar. So that's, that's another example. Let's talk about chili. The cans are, look like they're different sizes, but it actually is the same. Um, a serving size for this one is a cup. This is a cup. Okay. You got two servings in yours? Yep. Yep. 310 calories. I have 330. Okay. 
Uh, 15 grams of fat. I have 17 grams of fat. I have 6 grams of fiber. I have 8 grams of fiber. And 17 grams of protein. 17 grams of protein. So again, a little bit different. Um, now this is a little bit of a cheat. Most pastas are going to be the same. Except we like to use a lot of times a, a dream fills or even smart taste um, pasta, which uh, has a little bit more, I believe, fart. Uh, <laughs> a little more what? <laughs> has a little bit more fiber in it. And which so, causes what? <laughs> <laughs> and so a half cup serving here. Um, I have a half cup dry serving. Okay. And this is 200 calories for regular pasta. 190. Okay, uh, one gram of fat. One gram of fat. All right. Uh, carbs, 42 grams. 41 grams. And then fiber, two grams. Ooh, I got five grams. Yes. Protein, seven. Protein is seven. Okay. So it will depend on which one you grab. So if you are, my best advice is if you are counting calories or you are counting something specific in your diet, then you need to make sure that you're calculating using the ingredients that you have. And if you need a calculator, there are all kinds of them online. You might talk to your doctor about what one they would would uh, suggest. Like we said, we personally have used loseit.com um, for, uh, for years um, whenever we need to mm -hmm. calculate stuff like that. So that's just a little example of why I'm not going to start adding that kind of stuff because what I'd hate, a perfect example is sometimes folks have um, heart conditions. And so um, I had somebody asking me about sodium on um, one of our recipes that called for steak seasoning. And steak seasoning, a, a regular steak seasoning will typically have a lot of salt in it, which yep. would have a lot of sodium. But there are low sodium versions of steak seasoning. And if I were to just read off the label of my steak seasoning, it's going to have a much different salt count or sodium count than many different versions. And so you need to be looking for the kind of product that fits the diet that you're trying to, um, to pursue. The only suggestion that I would tell you guys is when it comes to noodles, um, I don't care whether it's macaroni, if it's vermicelli, if it's spaghetti, if it's masticcioli, use real noodles. Never use an impasta. Oh my goodness. That's all I got. <sighs> and that, uh, should I go badon ching? That's what you married, honey. Yes, yes, yes. So... There, that is our little lighter fare. Like I said, we we shared um, some of our lighter recipes with you today. Again, they may not fit with whatever diet you're on, and that you might look at those and go, "Geez, that just doesn't." That's what it's. Each person's going to be different. Yeah, and it's like, and our family is different than your family. Yep. We have questions like, "Can you make this paleo?" And I'm going to say, "No." No. Because I'm well, going to eat it. It might very well be, but we don't know because we don't... Don't take advice from people who aren't following the yeah. same thing you are. So, like, we're not diabetic, so when people ask me that kind of advice, I'm always like, you need to talk to your doctor. Or um, we don't, um, you know, we, we don't have... Um, a gluten allergy, so I would never want to give you advice on what I think is gluten-free, and then all of a sudden you have a reaction to having consumed it um, because it's a medical condition for you. Right. So, you know, don't take advice from people who aren't following that it's not as important to them to follow. In right. my opinion, that's that's my personal thing, and that's why I'm not going to tell you about, I'm not going to try and give you details about something that I really don't have any business giving you right. advice on. <laughs> so we're just going to share what we do, and that's why I just wanted to show you guys how those nutrition labels are quite a bit different um, so that so that you can make sure that what you're doing, you're – you're following whatever diet it is that you're wanting to. But this is for later. Mm. Or actually earlier. We taped the menu part at the end. And I just wanted to share my favorite brown rice with oh, okay. everybody. So.
Now that you've seen our now I've seen the brown rice. Yes. I will see it again soon. Yes. But then I will already have seen it by what you've seen. We're time travelers. We're Inception. No. We're Doctor Who. Yes. There you go. All right. Because bow ties are cool. Matt Smith was the only good doctor. I'm sorry. Don't say that. Okay, no, the others are good. I'll, I should put that different. Matt Smith is the best doctor. He's your favorite doctor. No, he's, he's the best. <laughs> David Tennant was good. Um, this new guy, it's okay. But I like Peter. Peter Capaldi. Yeah, he, he's a nice guy. I think I'd like to sit down and he doesn't, sip tea with he him. He doesn't really watch Doctor Who, so uh, the he's, only season he's got I, a the very only seasons I've watched with surface Smith, so. opinion. Yeah. But he did. He you the one time you got into it was during the Matt Smith Rose and Rory period. Yes, yes. And there's people watching this right now going, "What are Rose they and Rory? About? You mean Amy and Rory? Oh yeah, them too. I swear I watched it, but there's people going. There's people who have no idea what we're talking about anyway. It, it's okay. They're like Doctor Who. Exactly. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of people who do know what we're talking. That's about. true. Yes, we're very excited. It's finally back. Or coming this year. I gave up after Matt Smith left. Matt, if you're watching, come back. He's now with the queen. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, enough random. Now you know what kind of TV shows you watch. <laughs> or what I watch. Yeah, what do you watch? watch? I watch it. The Walking Dead. <laughs> Rick! Alrighty. Okay. Okay, send us your questions. Send us your comments. Bye. Bye.